Good afternoon uh, or good morning, everybody. We uh, we are going to start the meeting. We wait just another minute uh, <clears throat> for the last attenders and we start. Give you a few seconds. OK, we go. So again, uh, welcome to this webinar for the payment condition evaluation. So today we uh, talk about uh, how to collect and elaborate this stress data in order to uh, get in, uh, usable information for the evaluation uh, of payment surface. Uh, just a presentation for myself. I'm Umberto Pinoli. Uh, I'm senior payment engineers at Dynatest. I have more than 15 years experience in uh, payment survey and evaluation. I'm responsible for equipment and software application. Uh, I support the R&D activity and I lead the consulting unit. Uh, here below you have my contacts. So please uh, uh, feel free to write me or text me asking uh, suggestions and comments about this webinar. Uh, before I start some uh, uh, info, uh, the webinar will be recorded to be published on our uh, YouTube uh, page. Uh, the camera is always off for all attenders and they can sign also as anonymous if you want. Uh, the attenders can switch on the subtitle themselves from the option panel. Uh, it's not automatic. And for any questions, since uh, you are muted, please wait the hand. Uh, at the end of the meeting, there is a question and answer section, and you can write your question in the chat space. An outlook about the today argument. Uh, we talk about uh, the needs to evaluate payment quality, so why we need to evaluate, and uh, which is the process uh, to distress identification, so which is the distress, what we define distress, and how we define the distress. Uh, then we'll see the type of survey, so the, there are different kinds of, of survey you can run, uh, totally different in speed and quality, uh, the payment condition parameters, so which could be the parameter calculated uh, and can be compared by different roads or by different years in the same road. And then we'll see some uh, dynamic equipment and software, how we uh, elaborate the data to provide this type uh, of parameter. And of course, the last session about Q&A. So uh, payment surface evaluation. So the first uh, question always is done is how can we evaluate the quality of a payment surface? So usually if you have the right, left picture and the right picture, the, uh, the question is what is good road, what is not a good road, or which is the road that is in not in good condition or in, in bad condition? And of course, the good condition is always associated to the right picture, and the not good condition is associated to the left picture. But how much not good? So uh, how, we, I, how we can define when a payment is not in good condition? Because it's very pretty easy just define when it is in good condition, but not always it's easy to define the not good condition and which is the minimum acceptable condition. So through some standards uh, and through techniques of survey, we define um, criteria to define these needs. Uh, looking at this, this picture, in the three pictures, uh, always there is at least one crack. 
So the payment is damaged, but is damaged always in the same way? As the same, the damage has the same impact in the payment? Is always uh, damaged in the same way? Probably the left feature is a high damaged road by block cracking or something similar. In the middle one, there is a, a reasonable amount of cracks. And in, th in the third feature on the right, of course, there is just one crack. So they are cracked road, but are not cracked in the same way. So the severity of the damage is not the same. Of course, again here, how much maybe is a subject problem? Like there is no an object way to define how much if we don't define what measure and how measure. Different type of distress. So on the on, on the road, you can find very different kind of distresses. You can have single crack, longitudinal crack, that are is isolated crack. Or you can have a cluster of cracks like alligator. That means that the pavement uh, is really damaged. And then you can have a puddle where the some parts of the uh, surface course is are removed due to the traffic usually. And in this case, the surface is destroyed. It's not only damaged. And then you can have a block crack. That is again a group of single longitudinal and transversal crack, but combined has a different uh, meaning than not isolated crack. But again, on the payment, you can have also not crack related distress because there are different kind of distress. Is a, is a, uh, they have a different origin and different meaning for from a, a payment engineering perspective. You can have bleeding that is a, pro, pro, is a problem or is an issue linked to the uh, asphalt concrete mix. You can have reveling where some stone are missed from the surface. Uh, and you can have rotting where the problem can uh, uh, be reflected in the upper asphalt concrete layers or in the bottom uh, subgrade layer and could be uh, rotting in both of cases. And all these three payments are damaged, but are not crack related. So type of uh, distresses you have to identify on the road are totally different. You cannot look just for cracks because this type of distresses are not crack related. And again, maybe you can have the rigid payment and rigid payment has, uh, uh, is characterized from a completely different type of distresses because the damage on the concrete slab has a different mechanical principle from the uh, asphalt concrete. So in this case, you can have the corner break. Usually corner break is one of the most common uh, break in the payment, in the concrete payment, because uh, uh, the corner is the uh, is the less rigid part of the slab, so it's uh, very critical also for the design phase. Or you can have also shutter slab, so is a is another uh, different uh, mechanical uh, effect uh, uh, for the uh, slab breaking, and uh, it's uh, uh, has to be, of course, is crack related. But the, during the engineering evaluation, of course, we need to take in consideration that the meaning and the origin of the, that problem is totally different from the corner break. And you can have the joint spalling, for example. So, and you can have joint spalling in a lot of uh, points of the uh, corners uh, of the uh, slab edge. And again, also for the rigid payment, you can have uh, not crack related. So when you are going to investigate a slab, you cannot take into account only of the cracks, but you can have scaling where the top fine part uh, of the of the slabs is removing by by weather condition or by um, horizontal force applied. You can have some uh, uh, damage in the ceiling. So usually some parts of the sealant is missing 
and you can have pop out that again is a problem of the concrete mix because some small stone uh, are missed on the top surface of the slab. So, and again, so this is uh, an example of very different type of uh, distresses that you have to collect when you judge uh, your uh, payment. And the question is, uh, do you have to consider all of them? Can you exclude some? Do we need to add? In order to have uh, a very um, uh, repeatable uh, investigation, of course, different standards has been developed uh, by the time. So probably the most, two uh, most used two standards uh, is the ASTM. One is for airport payment condition index survey, and one is for uh, uh, road and parking lots survey. Uh, of course, they define a certain amount of distresses and how you can measure and identify on the payment. But uh, there is also a very uh, famous manual that is the PACER manual. And the ASHTO developed uh, uh, some standard, especially for the uh, survey uh, conducted using uh, uh, camera technology or uh, 3D camera technology. In fact, uh, the, name, uh, the name of the standard is the Pratix for quantifying crack in asphalt payment surfaces col from collected payment image utilizing automatic methods. So this is not for the uh, manual investigation. In the difference is the ISTM was originally developed for the manual investigation. And uh, we have also other type of uh, standard, especially the last ESTM E3303, generating payment surface cracking index uh, from digital images. Uh, is one of the most recent one. And, the, uh, and this is uh, um, uh, developed uh, just taking consideration only cracks on the payment and not all the rest. And uh, during the uh, development of the standard, different comparison has been performed from the PCI generated from the first ISTM standard and the last. And uh, developers demonstrate that there is a, a huge correlation between only the cracks on the payment and the final uh, payment condition uh, on the road. So which techniques are used for crack detection? Uh, by the time, the most used one has been the manual rate. So there is one or more operators that are on the road. They select a sample unit that usually is 50 meter by uh, 6 meter or is 100 meter for uh, one lane uh, width. And inside this area, they are going to identify manually all the distresses. And for the distresses that the distresses that are countable, they measure using ruler or um, wheel meter exactly the amount of each cracks, and they measure the area for like uh, alligator cracks or block cracks, and they take care. Uh, they take uh, in consideration also about all the not countable uh, uh, distresses like uh, bleeding or rutting or other. So it's a very long process, not easy. The second method is the uh, HD camera. Uh, is the is a vehicle where a, a normal camera HD are installed on top of the uh, roof, usually or in front of the white screen, and uh, the uh, analysis of the payment has been provided from the uh, operators. Uh, raters that on the screen they draw manually all the cracks on the payment, or sometimes there are software that are based on pixel uh, analysis algorithm that they try to identify automatically the uh, cracks. And the third technique uh, is the 3D laser camera uh, that are the most advanced today and also mostly used because it's uh, they are fast uh, and they have good uh, consistency for the uh, post-processing phase. Uh, and of course, these cameras are laser scanner cameras, so they can collect the, profi the transversal profile of the road and the algorithm automatically calculated and identify the presence of a crack. 
just to give you an idea how many distress you need to evaluate and which is the reason why this type of process is quite long, this is the distress list uh, for the uh, flexible payment on the road. There are 20 different types of distress you can identify and you need to take into account when you go on site. Uh, so it's not the process just to go on site and check if you have alligator cracks, longitudinal transversal cracks, block crack or rotting or, um, or puddles that usually are the most easier to identify, but you need to verify uh, all the rest of the distresses. So it's, a, it's quite a big number. And as we see later, the ISTM for each type of this distress define also a procedure to characterize and measure the distress. This is the uh, list of rigid, for the rigid payment. Uh, we have, uh, uh, it's quite uh, different from the flexible one. Uh, of course, the most uh, used, uh, the most identified uh, distress is a spalling corner, spalling joint, and faulting. But of course, there is a, a, another big amount of distresses that can be identified. So the process is still quite long. And of course, when we measure only at a certain point, we need a parameter to uh, combine all the information come from single uh, distress in a more usable way. This is, for example, could be the case. In, in, in this picture, you can see uh, the results of, uh, of a, a survey inspection where uh, cracks and distresses have been uh, identified and for each of the stress has been assigned the GPS uh, position. So here is like the full picture of the uh, airport payment with all the stresses associated. And we can have also a long list of the uh, stress we can have the measure, but it's not easy because if you just uh, look at this picture, probably there is a 1000 of distress and we just analyze like uh, two taxiways and a small piece of runway. So there we need to use a, a, a parameter that summarizes this type of information. For this reason, the PCI payment condition index has been developed. The PCI is a numerical rating of the payment condition that uh, uh, range from zero to 100. 100, it means that there is the best possible condition for the payment, and zero, it means that is the worst. That, of course, is associated to the failed criteria of the payment. The PCI provide a measurement of the present condition of the payment based on the distress observed on the surface of the, of the payment, which also indicates the structural integrity and surface operational condition. It's very important that, uh, as reported, uh, observed on the surface, because of course, in case you can have a, a recently uh, milling and lay activity, of course, the surface is perfect, but maybe below the surface course, you still have cracks, alligator cracks. So the payment is not in good condition, but the surface is in good condition. For this reason, it's reported that the PCI cannot measure structural capacity, nor does it provide direct measurement of the skid resistance or roughness. It provides an objective and rational basis for determining maintenance and repair needs and priorities. So uh, it's very important that uh, um, the, it's reported uh, the, the word uh, is used objective because uh, theoretically it's objective, but the application of all the information reported in the standards for the PCI calculation is not always easy. And now we'll see. And it's uh, one of the uh, uh, key elements for the PCI calculation. In the PCI calculation, not all the, the same, all the distresses has the same weight. Of course, there are this, some type of distresses that is more as a, 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 a higher damage 
for the uh, in higher weight for the damage evaluation of the payment. Of course, if you have an edge crack, it's less important that you don't if you have a patching because it means that the the distress associated to the patching it means that the, the payment there was destroyed uh, and has been repaired. But probably by the time that type of patch will be subject to be deteriorated in a fast way. So it's, a, it's an important weight for the concept of damage road. In different, different cases, is the hedge crack that has a less influence for the uh, for the payment quality. Uh, the PCI standards, of course, describe and provide the information for the distress measurements and uh, so identification, measure, and uh, report. This is the case of the bump and sucks. Uh, distress. Of course, there is a long description because, of course, they describe what uh, the distress has to be and what the distress has not to be. So, BAMPs are small, localized, upward displacement of the payment. And, of course, now they are different from show. In the shows, uh, are caused by unstable payments. Bump, on the other hand, can be caused by several factors. So there is all immediately information on which could be the factors that provide the cause uh, of the uh, of the distress. And this is very important. So when you find this type of distress on the payment, you have uh, information, useful information for your engineering evaluation of payment condition and also which could be the maintenance strategy associated to that type of distress in order to fix uh, the problem and not to provide uh, incorrectly maintenance uh, solution. Then the severity levels are reported. In this case, the severity level is uh, uh, like uncountable, so it's a, it's a quality evaluation because the low level, say bump or sucks cow, uh, causes low severity ride quality, the medium is medium severity and the high, high severity. Of course, who define if, the, if it's low severity in ride quality? Of course, this is a subject perception of the, of the ride quality, so it's not easy. But if you, uh, if you look at, about the measurements for the crack and, uh, um, for example, for the crack, of course, in that case, the, each uh, level threshold is defined by the uh, crack width. So you have like a low is, is below six millimeter, medium is between six and, and 13, and high is over 13. So you have millimeter, so it's uh, different uh, type of measurements. And then there is also a reference how, on how to measure. So bump and sucks and, and sucks are measured in linear meters, because this is important when you uh, provide this information for calculation. And it's important also if they can be in combination or not in combination with other type of distresses. So if the bump occurs in combination with a crack, the crack also is recorded. So you can have the possibility to have two cracks in the same point, sorry, two distresses in the same point. In some case, uh, only one, um, one distress is taken into account when you have two or more, crack, more distresses. So type of inspection, uh, PCI manual inspection. In this case, we, we have one or more operators that uh, work on the payments and provide their rating. So they try to identify on the uh, on the payment what the standard is reported for the stress identification. So uh, they try to evaluate uh, if a distress can be associated to one reported in the standard or not. Or sometimes more complicated is decide at which uh, distress description from the standard. Uh, need to be associated on what we are looking uh, on site. And this is not easy. It seems easy, but uh, when maybe you have two very close uh, cracks, are two isolated parallel cracks, 
or are uh, alligator crab. So not always it's easy to define the type of uh, distresses, even follow the uh, standard uh, description. And of course, there are some issues associated to the manual survey. The first one, of course, is distress judgment is subjective because it can change operator by operator. So if we have to judge and decide, we don't always have the same perception. And this is, of course, at the hand bring uh, to a uh, different uh, evaluation of the uh, distress. Then we have a very high time consuming, so we need to spend a lot of time because uh, we need to move on site and work on the sample unit, take manual note and then report all the information when we arrive in the uh, in the uh, in the in, in office, and in that case, uh, is a time consuming. The third one is a lane closure, so we are going to close uh, the lane, and this is just to allow to operate uh, to separate the uh, survey activity from the normal traffic. And of course, lane closure has an impact on traffic condition. Then we have safety problems because the, we have operators on the road that in some way they have interference with the traffic. And of course, we have traffic uh, restriction that can anyway create problem to the uh, traffic in general. We can have also a low repeatability. So also the same operator, if repeating the same uh, survey, can get different results. And again, we have a sampling because it's not easy find the sampling. Uh, so the, identify the sample unit that we decide from, from the office to go into test. Because when we, especially we are in the airport case, on the road, if you have the mark pole, oh, it's pretty easy to identify 50 or 100 meter section length. But in the airport, you have a special uh, spatial uh, distribution that increase the problem to identify the, the correct sample unit. So the sample unit is a subdivision of the payment section that has a standardized size range. In case of uh, slab, is 20 continuous slab. And for the uh, uh, and for the uh, flexible payment is uh, around uh, two uh, yes is uh, two hundred twenty five square meter plus plus or minus ninety square meter. The payment section and all the sample unit needs uh, need to be placed in the same payment section where the payment section is a continuous payment area having uniform construction, maintenance, usage story and condition. And also they have to be subjected to the same traffic level. So uh, this uh, at the end of this description, you know that the, when we try now today to rate 100 percent of the surface using uh, uh, fast technology, simplify also the work compared to the manual rating in sampling identification. Uh, the, you can see here that uh, also there is a, a big section uh, subdivision in the airport between loaded area, unloaded area and shoulder, and each of them is quite consistent area. Uh, and in the apron again, you have the uh, most of the area are not traffic related but has to be rated to guarantee uh, safety uh, performance. So and to, now we are going to introduce a, a new technology for uh, distress survey. This type of vehicle we call a, a multifunctional vehicle, MFE, and is a, is a combination of multiple different types of technologies uh, that allow us to collect all the information needed uh, for the uh, distress survey. So on the right side, you can see that in front, the vehicle is equipped with the uh, profilometer bars in order to measure the transverse and the uh, longitudinal profile. And this can be associated in order to evaluate uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the 
uh, the uh, depression that is distress included in the ESTM standard. Uh, then we have a row camera. We can install uh, from one to eight row camera, and they are used to uh, have picture of surrounding area. Then we have a GPS antenna that can be associated also to a gyroscope or uh, inertial motion unit. Uh, we have a, an odometer to count the distance. And of course, we have the most important one that is the LCR system, that is the, the line scanner system uh, get on board. Uh, what is uh, an LCMS? Uh, LCMS is a combination of uh, line scanner and high uh, resolution camera. So from uh, this data, uh, we can get uh, a 2D image of the payment and we can get uh, 3D payment profiles in order to uh, uh, get a topographic uh, analysis of the payment. So if you see in this picture, all the uh, red points uh, is each point investigated from the camera. Uh, the camera uh, has a resolution of uh, 4,000 points across four, four meter transversally. So we have a transversal resolution of one millimeter and we can collect uh, one profile every millimeter. So this is a longitudinal resolution of one millimeter. And the vertical resolution is 0 0.5 millimeter. So it's a, a high accuracy and this uh, resolution is guaranteed up to 100 kilometer per hour. So you can run also uh, an entire um, collection at high uh, highway speed without problems. And you have enough information to detail and describe the profile inside and uh, inside the cracks and outside on the pavement. Uh, which is the typical installation of the LCMS camera. Uh, we have two types of installation that usually uh, can be provided. The first one is a mobile installation. Uh, we call mobile because uh, we can dismount and mount again uh, this type of assembly. Uh, so we have a, a certain amount of frames to fix the two cameras on the uh, rear part. The height uh, from, the, uh, from the ground has to be around two meters. And of course, in this case, we need to uh, fix all the cables uh, in a temporary way. Uh, on roof is installed the uh, GPS camera and the uh, initial motion unit is installed inside with a rack. Of course, this type of installation is not a proper installation to drive the vehicle on the road. So usually it's, uh, it's provided uh, just for airport test or for short, uh, short distance driving. Then we have what we call permanent installation. And this is usually is a big van where we can install uh, the camera in a proper way and everything is fixed to be uh, uh, transported uh, and, uh, and the vehicle can drive also long distance without problem. Uh, in our case, we decide to install in front one monitor and keyboard in order to allow that the, the driver can be also the operator because uh, uh, the start of the uh, acquisition process is just one click and the stop is just press S key from the keyboard but at the same time, we can have uh, two seats and uh, a, an office uh, desk uh, on, on the rear part of the van where the operator can have uh, a full computer, uh, two screens to monitoring the acquisition and run some uh, elaboration or check material, digital materials on the second screens. That of course, this configuration improve a lot the quality and time working especially for the urban uh, survey where we have a lot of short roads to be investigated. Uh, which are type of um, uh, elaboration? So here we have an example of a piece of runway uh, and we have what we call native image that is more or less a black and white picture, uh, high definition. So you can clearly see here the cracks along the pavement. 
these are the lights uh, on the runway. But there is also another elaboration possible that is called 3D image, where is a, a grayscale range picture where black points are the deeper points and the white is the upper points, highest points. Uh, so in this case, the white is on these lights that usually is like a couple of centimeter uh, above the pavement surface, but the uh, cracks, of course, are highlighted. So it's pretty easy to identify here cracks compared to the uh, black and white picture. But again, in this process, the identification is automatically. So uh, this type of picture allow to the user or to the reader just to provide a useful information to check the automatic rate. But uh, the rating has not to provide automatically. Uh, this is the LCMS data processing. Uh, here, this picture show which is the accuracy. Uh, of the information uh, processed by the LCMS. Uh, here in blue, you all these points is the uh, transversal profile collected from the left camera. So it's around uh, two meter, 2000 um, millimeter. And if you see these two rectangular shape here on peak, correspond exactly to the lane marking. So this, different of height here is the, the real different of thermoplastic marking on the pavement. So the system is really, is really accurate. Here, another example on how much is accurate the system. Uh, here you see a crack, you see the black, the, sorry, the blue line, the blue line is where uh, the software uh, are analyzing the transversal profile collected from the cameras. And here in blue, you have the transversal profile collected along uh, this profile here. If you see in the center, inside the red circle, you see this drop, this V shape here. This V shape here is exactly the crack because the, uh, the system can measure inside some points with a different depth compared to the rest of the payment and it can uh, draw this shape here of the crack. So in this case, the automatic system recognizes that this is a crack and measure the depth and the width. So in this way, we can identify in automatic, repeatable, and objective way the crack, and we can measure we can measure also the position, the depth, and the width. And connecting all the profile, we can measure at the end also the entire length of the longitudinal crack. So uh, if you can see here, the first step of the software is identify where is the marking lane. So all the crack outside the marking lane are excluded from the calculation. And then the system start to identify the cracks on the payment. If you see different color is associated to a different width because the severity of the cracks are associated with the width. Uh, if you see here, this part of the cracks is not identified because there is the reference of the marking lane that excludes all the cracks outside that link and the crack uh, identification stop exactly with the, uh, with the marking lane. Here we have our software that is called Dynatest Explorer and now we are going how we uh, look at the picture. If you see here, you have on the on the left side the grayscale uh, the grayscale uh, image range and the black and white on the right side. So this is the automatic process for crack detection. Most of the information are uh, collected from the uh, biometrics uh, uh, LCMS camera, but in our case uh, the software uh, our software automatically uh, detect the alligator cracks and the block cracking. Uh, each color is a different kind of, uh, of distress. 
Here on the right, you can see that we have the widescreen camera and the list of all rated uh, distresses. Our software allows to modify uh, each distress. So if you are not happy about the automatic uh, detection, you can modify and cancel each single, uh, each single distress. And then you can also rate. So you can add uh, distress manually. So you select type of uh, distress and the uh, severity. And you can draw, as you can see now from the red, uh, the yellow line, the distress. And that distress will be added to the list of the distress it is rated, independently if they are uh, automatically or manual uh, identified. So when we, uh, after the uh, rating uh, part of the process, we can export the distresses. And of course, we can generate a distress of the uh, or a distress list where each single distress is reported, uh, characterized from severity, width, length, and area, and from GPS, uh, of course, from starting and end point and GPS coordinates. Of course, we if you analyze uh, one kilometer, maybe you find thousands of distresses. And it's not really useful uh, for the payment evaluation, uh, this list. So it's more useful if you export a distress summer list. So you define the length of each interval. In this case, we have 50 meters. And for each interval, you can get the total amount of each type of distress and the percentage for severity level in order to see uh, immediately, which is the uh, severity distribution. Of course, associated to the table format, we have also uh, a graphical presentation of the results. So uh, usually the screen is divided in two parts. Uh, in the upper part, we have the area distresses, alligator, block, rutting, and raveling. So, uh, and you see a graph. And for each segment is reported the total amount of each distress is uh, identified uh, for for section for segment. So this is very useful uh, just to uh, visualize which is the segment of investigated road that is uh, more damaged. And in the uh, below part, of course, the same graph is calculated is generated for the uh, linear. Uh, distress. So we have longitudinal and transversal crack, sealed crack, portal, carb, and drop off. And you can see uh, all the trend of this uh, of this uh, distress distribution. Of course, now the technology is improved, and uh, uh, the uh, LCMS cameras can identify not only cracks but also uh, a big number of distresses that are not crack related. And again, uh, distresses can be exported in uh, uh, maybe a vector format, like uh, DWG AutoCAD file or DXF. Uh, if you want to import this type of information inside uh, 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 the proper software, or again, also in shapefile. So we have this vector format exported uh, uh, available, or you can export directly in Google Earth. So you can plot the distress in Google Earth, and also this, the color, uh, the color uh, associated to each crack during the rating can be exported also in the Google Earth. So you can immediately understand which type of distress is associated to each uh, drawing reported in the map. Uh, this is again our uh, data per software. We have PCI calculation, so we uh, immediately uh, calculate the PCI. We define just start and end point. Uh, in one click, we press PCI, uh, and here we you can see that uh, we have a, uh, a chart uh, sorry, yes, a graph where we can report the results. So PCI is reported for each, each 50 meter segment. And then 
we can uh, also export uh, the PCI in our Dynast Map module and also in Google Earth. So we, you, in, in this way, you can share immediately uh, with your colleagues uh, or managers uh, the, the PCI uh, investigation results. So uh, for each segment, uh, you, can, you have also a pop-up where you have some road uh, information, you have the date of investigation, uh, start and end change, and of course, the, PC, the PCI value reported. Uh, and here you can see a, a video or uh, if you, uh, we are able also to export a uh, payment picture and plot in the uh, georeferenced system. So in this case was supported from GIS. We can plot all the crack rated. Uh, you see here there is a piece uh, of, of uh, taxiway with a lot of amount of cracks. And if you uh, define the sample unit uh, position or, or uh, again based on GIS application, we can calculate the PCI and summarize the stresses for each sample unit in automatic way. So here the PCI is not uh, uh, preset, but is uh, uh, on, uh, this is uh, in, in ca calculated uh, just after the click. So uh, now we are going to uh, conclude that here you can see the difference of road PCI and airport PCI survey. Of course, in road PCI, usually uh, the PCI is, uh, is, is a reference to the lane. And of course, you have two or four lanes dependent, uh, depending on how many lanes uh, uh, have you investigated uh, along your carriageway. In the, uh, in the airport case, of course, it's more important this, uh, the site uh, distribution. So you don't have just one, two or four lanes, but you have a, a huge amount uh, of uh, uh, sample units. So in the road case is uh, you have uh, just uh, a few am amounts of parallel sample unit, but it's uh, very long. In the airport, you have uh, you have the maximum distance is four kilometers for a runway, but you have up to 16 uh, sample units across uh, this, uh, the pavement uh, section. So, of course, you have a, a, a more spatial distribu spatial distribution compared to the road PCI. And this is a typical example uh, of a PCI investigation results in airport. So the last question is why uh, do we perform the PCI uh, investigation? We run the PCI because we want to evaluate uh, the payment condition. But also, uh, if we are going to test uh, in multiple years or in multiple times, uh, the PCI, we can uh, evaluate which is the trend of uh, payment uh, performance decreasing in terms of PCI. And you see the left uh, graph that for each single alignment, you, can, you have different trend of the performance decreasing. And based on this information, of course, you can associate the maintenance uh, rehabilitation uh, in term or calculated in terms of time and cost. Because, of course, if you decide to uh, pro uh, provide the maintenance when the payment is still in good condition, you have what we call preservation or proactive maintenance. And of course, the cost is limited. And if you, if you or you can wait for a fair condition, poor condition, or failed, but of course the maintenance cost will be increased. Uh, so based on this information, you can calculate which is your best moment to uh, provide the payment maintenance. So this is the main scope associated to the PCI investigation. Uh, Going to summarize this uh, uh, webinar, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, we talk about uh, distress definition. So what uh, what we call distress and how we can measure and how we can run the distress survey. So uh, manual or using new technology that uh, simplify the work. It's more safe, it's faster and better. Uh, of course, uh, it needs the technology invested, uh, proper vehicle, 
and proper software for post-processing. Uh, but the output generated by the software is much, much useful compared to the just uh, numerical results we can get from the manual uh, uh, survey. Diant has developed uh, the right equipment and the right software to answer to uh, the market needs. So thanks for uh, attending this uh, webinar. And please now um, write in the chat question if you need some additional information. I hope that uh, uh, you uh, this meeting can clarify some of your points. Uh, this is just a brief introduction about PCI. Uh, probably in the ne next time uh, we'll go more deeply in our uh, type of investigation uh, and type of uh, data elaboration. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, a, an introduction, but uh, please uh, uh, send us email or comments if you want to know something or if you want that uh, dietists provide uh, more useful webinar for your needs because we have uh, payment expertise that can uh, suggest answer for your question. So uh, we don't have uh, other questions, so we can close here the, the webinar. Thanks all and have a good day. Bye.